has a look from in the back of the combine. We'll crawl inside with the chopper up and locked up. We can see up here, here's our discharge beater. You can see the wear strips on that and the serrated edges, some of the things that we want to look at. Make sure we don't have any damage from any form material running through here. Nothing's bent, nothing's in bad condition. Up front, we can actually see the shoe augers, the rear bearings on that. Um, our pre-cleaner, our chaffer. As you can see, this chaffer has, has some corn stalks stuck in it that we want to get cleaned out. Make sure we have full range on our chaffer and sieve. We can see in the back here, our grain loss monitor pads, some things that should be cleaned off in there to make sure that's ready to start the year. Um, and our chopper, we talk, chopper, the swinging hammers and rotating knives, along with the stationary knives and the things to look at on that. Also from up in here, you would probably crawl up inside there a little bit farther. We would look through the chaffer, see the sieve, We'd be able to look, look down in there a little bit farther and we could see the tailings elevator, tailings cross auger and up front a little bit the, the clean grain cross auger. Up in the grain tank, one of the things we want to look at here, here is our yield monitor and our grain moisture sensor. Down below that is the dipstick for the loading auger gear case, in which case here we can see the loading auger gear case and the drive on that. We can also get a look at our mass flow sensor, make sure there's no material built up behind that, make sure that's all clean. We can see our loading auger, the condition of that. We can also see into the top of our clean grain elevator and the condition of some of the things up there. The other thing is you want to look at, make sure you looked at the loading auger because they do wear. Um, we also have our grain tank full sensor, the wiring going to that. We have our grain tank light, the wiring going to that. We also have our cross augers and the covers on our cross augers. <clears throat> And we can see down into the cross augers here and a little bit of our unloading auger housing. This, all I did here was flip the loading auger down so we could get in there and see that. To flip that auger back up into position, we'd have to flip, flip it back up and then we'd put our grain tank sample trough back in place. Back out of the grain tank, still up in the engine compartment, we would swing the unloading auger out of ways as you can see, there's an inspection door here that we would take off. There'd be another one up closer to the hinge point up there that we would take off. You're going to look inside this auger. You're going to look for worn spots, or worn auger. You're going to try and get an idea of if your splines are getting worn between your vertical auger and your gear case, your 90 degree gear case that's back there, or the splines up in here where your auger is added in. So with that swung out, you can get at those and get a pretty good look at them. As far as the engine compartment itself, I opened the top doors here. This one, you would probably need to fold this grain tank extension down, get it out of the way so that we can get this next door open. Get that door open. We're gonna crawl down inside there. We're gonna get from down there, we're gonna get a good look at the front side of this engine. We're gonna see our gear case and our variable drive for our rotor. Um, from there, we'll be able to get a good look at the engine itself, see if we have any leaks on the fuel system, any leaks on an oil pan, anything like that. We can look at all our electrical, we can look at um, our alternator. We wanna get a good look at our cooling fan to make sure we don't have any issues with the cooling fan um, as far as fins cracking or anything like that. Um, radiator hoses, after cooler hoses and clamps. Remember the after cooler from the turbo going over to the cooler and back to your intake is all pressurized. So we need to make sure that the rubber hoses 
and the clamps are in good shape for that so we don't have any air leaks. Our radiator overflow tank is there. Uh, air filters, we want to start out with a new air filter coming into the new year. Looking down on this side of the engine, we can see our filters here. We can see our oil dipstick. Get a good look at the engine, the fuel system. Make sure everything is clean. Make sure everything is dry. We don't have any leaks. Engine gear case. You can see the dipstick here for the engine gear case. <clears throat> some more hoses, some more wiring on top of here. Another thing to be careful with in the engine compartment or everywhere on the common, just make sure it gets cleaned off good. Get rid of all the chaff, get rid of all the debris, make sure it's blown off good, cleaned off good it's for storage. Uh, hydraulic reservoir is here. Moving over to the cooling package, we have a big door on the cooling package that we can open. Shows our rotary screen. On our rotary screen, if we look from the top down into the rotary screen, we can see down here we have a brush that helps keep our rotary screen clean. Over here we have our drive belt for the rotary screen. Make sure it keeps turning. Make sure that keeps clean so we have good cooling from our engine fan. In here we have a couple of the coolers, the air conditioner evaporator, and we can flip them out. Now we can see our after cooler and our radiator. Make sure they're all blown out very well. Make sure our deflector blade bearing is good and that we don't have any dirt buildup and problems, anything that's going to cause us any problems with cooling system going into next year. As far as, as, far as up in the cab, um, you kind of remember from, from Paul what happened at there, what things that you saw, things and little mo noises maybe that you heard. Make sure you think about those as you're running this, running through this. But now we're in the cab, we've, we've got this thing, let's run everything. Run everything that there is to run. Raise the feeder house up and down. Raise the feeder house speed up and down. Variable speed for the fan up and down. Um, concave up and down. Sieve and chaff are open and closed. Check everything. This is a good time to do calibrations on everything. Once you're done with it, once you get everything back together, do all your calibrations, make sure everything is working, everything's ready to go for next year. Um, a couple other things are, uh, Safety. Don't forget about safety. Um, check all your lights. Make sure you run, turn all your lights on, turn all your hazard lights on, turn all your flashers on. Make sure every flasher works, make sure every light works. This is the time to watch that stuff. Uh, I did mention the fire extinguisher back in the engine compartment. Another fire extinguisher here. Make sure those are tested, make sure they're good. Um, one thing I would recommend with any of these fire extinguishers on ag equipment, is at least twice a year, take that fire extinguisher off, tip it upside down, hit it with a rubber mallet, make sure nothing's getting settled out on the bottom, that it's still, that it's still usable when you are ready to use it. Um, so that's, that's some little safety issues. As you're working on it, if you do have to get under it, make sure that your feeder house stop gets put down. Um, also now when we're done doing all this, we do all our repairs. Um, get everything done, everything back together. Make sure every shield goes back on this. I've got quite a few shields pulled off this for, for inspection purposes, but I don't have near as many off as what you will when you're completely doing this. Um, make, sure, make sure that all them shields get put back on there, everything's in place so we're safe after that. As far as maintenance, uh, lubrication, um, I pointed out a couple little things as I was walking around, but I purposely didn't point out a lot of them because there's no possible way in a video like this to get every point to really see what it is. And besides that, there are a lot of, there are a lot of grease points on these that have a specific way they need to be greased as far as your variable speeds and some of those. Sometimes they need to be greased in the fast speed, some things need to be greased in the slow speed. The only recommendation I have there is there's an operator's manual with every one of these. Follow every step in the operator's manual when it comes to, to lubrication, lub greasing and lubrication. Uh, make sure your oil levels are checked at the right time. 
whether your feeder house is up or whether it's down. Make sure you're greasing your variable speeds that you're, that you're also moving them. If you go through the steps in the book, it tells you that in the book while you're looking at it. Um, those are some of the little things that get missed. Oil interval changes, filter interval changes. Um, I know a lot, of, a lot of these machines nowadays, we don't even get to the hours where it says you should change engine oil. But if you look in the book, most times, most books are also gonna tell you um, maybe the engine oil, if you're using John Deere oil and a John Deere filter, maybe we're extending that out to a 400 hour oil interval change. But it also probably says, or annually, the same with your air filters. Um, it's certain amount of hours or when they're plugged up or annually. So a lot of those things you wanna do every year, no matter whether you're to that hour limit or not, just to make sure you're ready for the next year. This has been a really quick walk around of this machine and a really quick thing to, of some things to look at, but now's the time to do it when it's all fresh in your mind after the season. Make sure you get it checked over, make sure you get things worked on before the season rolls around next year and we'll have a good start to next year. In closing today, I would like to point out that this has been a very short video and walk around of a combine inspection that normally takes an experienced combine mechanic between half and three quarters of a day to complete. If you are going to do this inspection yourself, please take your time, do a good job of recording the repairs that are needed and be safe while you're doing this inspection. Hopefully a well-performed inspection and repairs will translate into a very trouble-free season next fall. From all of us here at Midwest Machinery, thank you for joining us today.